Good morning. It is a good morning, but I'm not doing well this morning. When I left the, the house this morning, I came out and uh, uh, went to get in the car and something just went. And so I got in the car and I got some ice and sat on ice all the way to the church driving on it. And hi guys, come on in. And uh, yeah, Sandy was sick. And uh, Ramon and Carlos just prayed for me in my office. And so uh, I'm just going to trust the Lord and we're going to do what we got to do, right? Amen. Because I am not going to let anything get me down in the Lord's work. Yeah, I will. I, I know I trust God. God's going to make me go. So I, that's what's important. I trust God. <laughs> so, um, uh, I might, forgive me if I, get, if I do get a little confused today. I might, but I don't think I will. Um, after Ramon and Carlos prayed for me, um, I was feeling much better. But then when I tried to come up the steps, it hurt a little bit more. But you know what? Life goes on. I know many of you have ailments as well. And we're all just going to look along and do the best we can and trust God, right? Amen. Trust God. Worship team, come on up here.
song, right? Yes. Today I will be reading the morning scripture in Psalms 138, 1 through 5. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing praises to you before the gods. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give you thanks to your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word according to all your name. On the day I called, you answered me. You made me hold the strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth will give thanks to you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. And they will sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you. Thank you always, Lord God, for the grace and the mercy that you show your people, Lord God. I pray a special blessing for the church today, Lord God, the pastor, and the message, the word that you will be saying, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for everyone here today, Lord God. And we just pray and ask that you bless, bless this church, Lord God, as you have it.
I don't know. I have to look at the schedule. What else is going on with that? Yes. Just a reminder today at 2 o'clock, we'll be having a Christmas Eve celebration. Yes. Oh, that's right. That's right. 2 o'clock, practice here. So you're probably reading all this up there, I'm not telling you. But anyway, yeah. So uh, this, this is going to be an exciting month with all the things that God is doing and blessing us with and everything. And uh, let's see, where are we? Family of God's next. Family of God. We're going to continue with this because I've had so many people tell me that they love it and they want it. And I also understand that there are some of you that are a little uncomfortable with it. And if you are, when somebody comes to hug your neck and shake hands, just put your hand on the stage or do this, you know, but, you know. <laughs> because I understand that some of you don't feel comfortable doing that. But so we're going to continue with it. We're going to say right now.
Right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the gift of life. Thank you for everybody that's here today. May you bless our pastor, be with our congregation, and may you bless this offering, both gift and giver. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Oh, 
have, but it honors those that have gone before us. <laughs>
started a, somewhat of a tradition several months ago, I don't know, I think maybe a bit close to a year, uh, about having what we've called our call to prayer. And we are in the process of revising that right now, but until then, we're going to go with what we've, we've, the way we've been doing it. So, first of all, I'd like to ask, is there anybody that would like to add a prayer request on our list? Yes.
that those are feeling too, right? So we'll mention them first, Gloria and Lorraine and Sharon and Johnny and Rachel and Michael and Mary and Jose and Steve and Richard and Daniel and Carol, Donna, Nedra, Marge, Vera, Jack, Pat, Sarah, Sam, Mike, and Jim. Kay and Sharon and Marja and Tony and Karen and Marion and Mike and Mara and Victor and Jamie. Terry, Bobby, Cookie, Terry, Danny, Lydia, Alicia, Vicki, Abuba, Linda, Shirak, Josh, Paul, Billy, Sue, Chris, Jacqueline, Mary Ellen, Rachel, Juanito, Bob, Sylvia, Patricia, Bobby, uh, Marie, Joshua, Valentino, Joe, uh, George and Gabriel, Dale, Jennifer, Dennis, Amy, Justin, Charles, Jackie, Dion, Frank, Joe, Kathy's granddaughters, uh, John and Terry, Cynthia Clark, uh, Pauline, Mello, Martin, uh, Michael, Red's family, Kathy and Robert, uh, Sandy, Marion, Mario, Roseanne, Monica, Jim, Never, the Board family, Linda, Pauline, Dorothy, Jodel, Januva, uh, Don, Carol, Savannah, Paul, Getty, Betty, Garrett, Jim, Charlie, Delbert, uh, George, Bay, uh, Braden, James, Robert, and Elizabeth, and Ramona, Mary Jane's boys. And then we've got some things to pray for. Uh, we definitely want to pray for our church. Amen. Uh, I think our, our church is, is gradually going in a better direction. Uh, we survived, we survived COVID and uh, other issues that came and we're hanging in there and God is blessing. And uh, so pray for our church. Pray that we'll do God's will and they'll know what to do and how to do it. And then uh, pray for Israel. I was watching the news this morning and uh, they were showing film clips of the, of the USA and the big C-130s dropping food over the Gaza Strip for the people that were starving. Uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of big huge boxes full of non-perishable food. So, you know, we're doing what we can to help them. But uh, Israel uh, needs to see this through. So pray for them. And then uh, uh, the Ukraine. Uh, war is going on now for over two years. And it's not a pretty sight. And I know that the United States is arguing and talking and discussing about how much aid to give them. Uh, we just need to pray that God will have his way. Let's just pray that God's will will be done. And we can't go wrong with that, can we? Amen. Let's bow our hands, shall we? <clears throat> Father God, we love you and praise you. We thank you, Lord, that you hear every prayer that we pray. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to pray in the name of Jesus for our loved ones, for our family, for ourselves. And we do that today, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, as you taught us. And Father God, I pray that you will hear the prayer for all these individuals that we pray. And Father, we want to pray for the USA, too. With all the difficulties and struggles we've been going through, with an election coming up, God, all I can think of and say is, please, Father, let your will be done, whatever that is. Because you know best. I pray for our president and for our senators and congressmen and all the leadership of our country. I pray for our church, Lord, and I thank you for the dear people that are here and the, the wonderful family experience we have in this place. And I pray your blessings. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for blessing us in so many ways. And I pray.
pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, 
uh, the one whom Jesus loved, he knew and had an understanding of Jesus that the others just didn't have. That he understood much deeper uh, into what Jesus was teaching and the plan that Jesus had for everyone's life. And John seemed to understand that. And I think that there's no, it's not unusual that God chose John to show the vision of the Revelation to because John was able to understand it probably better than anybody else, and he didn't hardly understand it. And we don't either. But John was unique, I think that you'll all agree in that. And so uh, we come to a situation in, um, in the, the, after the IMs and after the closing of the 15th chapter, there seems to be five themes that are established in this period of this gospel. And it talks about the importance of bearing fruit. It talks about the importance of keeping my commandments, the importance of the help of the Holy Spirit, the importance of loving one another, and the importance of prayer. So we're gonna talk about those five themes this morning and what they mean to us and, and why they are so important. So I'm gonna start with an unanswered question thus far, because the, the first theme I'd like to take is fruit, because in the, in the scripture I just read, it began talking about fruit. And uh, um, I, you know, you all will remember this, as we talked about it where I said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, and that you should listen, that you should go and bear fruit. Believers are supposed to bear fruit, but you know a lot of times, especially with new Christians, and sometimes with older Christians, we forget. What does it mean to bear fruit? What is this fruit that we're trying to bear, or that we need to bear, that the Holy Spirit helps us to bear? Uh, and I wanted to read to you from uh, Galatians, where in chapter 5, it's about as clear as it can be anywhere. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 26, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is. So we know that Paul is describing and helping us to understand about what is this fruit of the Spirit that Jesus told us we are to bear, that we are to, to, to work within the realms of? And so he says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things is the law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit as well. Later on, we're going to be looking at one of the themes which we talk about, the help of the Holy Spirit. And we'll tie into the fruit of the Spirit again because we can't, we can't bear fruit on our own. I mean, let's face it, folks. Uh, we have a hard time sometimes just going through the day without losing our temper or, or falling into sin or falling into temptation. Uh, we want desperately to do what God wants us to do every day, to obey Him and follow Him. But Satan is just as determined. He wants to, to destroy your day every day. He wants to make you ineffective every day. He wants to discourage you every day. And so there is a battle that takes place in our lives every day. As we seek to bear fruit, it's not something that we can say and say, I want to try really hard and, and be peaceful today or be full of joy. I want to try real hard to be kind. And not, you can't, we can't do it that way. Lord God, Please allow your Holy Spirit to guide me 
and the bearing kind of fruit you want me to bear. Because that's the only way we can do it, that's the only way we can be successful at it, and that's the way that God intended for it to be. That the Holy Spirit, this is the fruit, he calls it the fruit of the Spirit. It is the fruit in our lives as a result of our relationship through the Holy Spirit with God. Now folks, I wish I could tell you this morning that I was a perfect example of bearing fruit. And I'm probably the worst example you'll ever see. Because I told you before I had a horrible temper. And if I don't keep it under control, I lose it. And there's damage done in about every direction. And that's not what God wants. That's not what I want. That's what Satan wants. And I try so hard, you know, to, to love and be kind and, and peace and patience and gentle and so on. And God gives me the grace to do a lot of those things. But sometimes flesh takes over. As we all know, sometimes flesh just takes over. And that's our battle. I'm in a lot of pain today with my back. But you know, that's not my worst problem. My problem is like your problem. That battle that goes on in our life to obey God, to serve God, and to bear fruit as he wants us to do. He says in John chapter 15, verse 8, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be, to be my disciples. How do we prove to be his disciples? Bear fruit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do this. I know I talk about my mother a lot. She, I can't help it. She probably had more effect on my life as a Christian than anybody else. And Kathy told me this morning, she said that second song they sang uh, about heaven reminded her about my mother. And when I heard the song, it reminded me of my mother too, because I know my mother's gonna be looking for me to walk through that golden gate, and she'd be waiting there. And she'll have all these things to tell me and talk to me about. Because that's what our Christian life is about, the joy of sharing with one another, living with one another, blessing one another, helping one another. Uh, just like this morning, uh, I could barely get from my car to my office. And the first thing I thought about was to have Ramon and Carlos come and pray for me in my office. Because that's what we're supposed to do. God has raised up people in the church and we pray for one another. And yet sometimes we don't do it for fear of, of uh, uh, embarrassment or being declined. And Satan defeats us in that. But folks, let me just simply share with you. The more you try to bear fruit in the spirit for God, the more trouble you're going to have. Because Satan is going to fight you every step of the way. And that's not something to be fearful about. When that happens, you just say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I bind you and resist you in the name of Jesus. And he has to flee from you. He has to. So the first theme that I wanted to talk about was fruit. Because when Jesus was talking about I am the vine, he mentioned about fruit. But it occurred to me that a lot of people, and particularly new Christians, aren't really aware of what the fruit is of the Spirit's all about, what it means, what, what, what it is. And you'll find that in Galatians chapter 5, the fifth chapter. Now the next thing that I want to, the next thing I want to look at is commandments. Jesus had a lot to say about commandments. And here's a few of things. Uh, as a matter of fact, remember when the Pharisees and the scribes and Sadducees came to him and says, Lord, what is the greatest commandment? Remember that? They were trying to trip Jesus up. 
they were trying to embarrass him or make him say something that wasn't right. And here's how he answered them. He just simply uh, quoted the Shema from the Old Testament. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets. So we're going to come back to love in a minute because you notice that in this commandment it's all about loving. Love God. Love your neighbor. And we're going to talk about that in a in a moment. But Jesus talked a lot about the commandments. He says in John chapter 13, verse 38, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another even as I have loved you that you also love one another. And then he says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So love and commandments are tied together in that way because the first command that we have is that we love, that we love God, that we love one another. So fruit is the first theme, commandment is the second theme. So I'm going to go on to the third theme, which is, I'm going to put it next as loving. Because Jesus talked a lot about love. And uh, he said, we read the commandment to love God and to love one another. How loving affects our obedience. You can't obey God if you don't love God. I think everybody knows that. But sometimes we do things that make it appear that we don't love God and we're not even trying to obey Him. But anyway, uh, in John chapter 14, 21, it says, The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. Once again, love and commandments connected. John chapter uh, uh, 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this that a person will lay down his life for his friends. You know, we have the opportunity in life to do a lot of things for people. In fact, practically on the street corner, we're faced with it. People that have needs, people that are lost in their own way. Sandy told me about a man that approached her uh, two days ago with Jack in the Box. Uh, Jack in the Box is my favorite fast food place. <laughs> and I've almost gotten her to the habit of going there all the time. But anyway, she went in to get some things. And while she was ordering, this man, this young man, walked up to her. And he says, ma'am, I, I, I don't want to scare you. And I don't want you to be afraid, and I'm not asking for money. He said, could you please buy me something to eat? I'm so hungry, I haven't eaten in a while. And of course, she did. She says, how would you like a breakfast burrito? It was breakfast time. How would you like a breakfast burrito and, and some coffee? And, you know, and he, she said, she's telling me this story. She said, he got so excited, he almost did a little dance. Now somehow that story that she told me seemed really genuine. Now we're faced with a lot of those kinds of things on the street that don't seem so genuine, right? And you know what I'm talking about. Amen. There's all kinds of people out there that want to get something from us. And folks, I only know how to tell you one way. Let God lead you. Let God guide you. Let God show you what to do. But when he shows you, you better do it. Okay? There's another scripture about love in John chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. Just as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Remain in my love 
if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. So we see the connection of love and the commandments. It's the number one commandment from God, that we love him and that we love one another. But we always struggle with that. We struggle where it takes us sometimes. I think I told you the story. Um, I like to eat at uh, Norm's uh, down on Indian Hills Road. I don't know why. We get into habits and you know, all the crazy sometimes. And I and I love um, um, oh no, I'm not gonna go down that. <laughs> but there's a long sidewalk coming up, up from the parking lot to Norms, slightly uphill. And one of the first times I went there, there was this young man begging on the sidewalk begging for anything that I was willing to give him. And I saw him on the head, and so I said, here we go. And I think, and so I start praying, Lord, what, what do you want me to do about this? So the Lord led me to give him five bucks, so I gave him a five dollar bill, and he was almost speechless. And I said, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. This better be for food, and it better not be for drugs or alcohol. I said, do you understand that? This is from God, not from me. And I think I scared him a little bit. <laughs> and I said, that's the way it is. I, and I just walked on in and went in the restroom. Okay, the next time I came to the arms, which was a couple weeks later, I think, same guy, same sidewalk, and he saw me coming. And he said, I didn't use any of the money for drugs or alcohol. <laughs> So, you, you know, when we, when, when we do what God wants us to do, the people that it affects, they don't forget. They might act like they forgot, but they don't forget. It's still rattling around in their brain and rattling around in their heart. So commandment love goes together. Now, uh, from here, we've talked about the fruit of the Spirit. We've talked about commandments. We've talked about loving. We're going to go to the Holy Spirit. John talks about the Holy Spirit more than any other writer in the Bible. And definitely in the Gospels, he talks more about love. In fact, he describes himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Did you ever notice that when you read John? He, he must have been a, an incredibly loving man and, and loved Jesus so much and he knew that Jesus loved him. John, uh, uh, Jesus tells us, in John chapter 14, verse 26, he said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, that the disciples have the Holy Spirit yet, no. The Holy Spirit was upon them and led them, but they did not receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit until the day of Pentecost. Remember in the upper room? It said they were all praying. And it said that the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they really got excited and started making a lot of noise and shouting and praising God. Speaking in tongues, the Bible says. And so as a result of this, all the people that had gathered in the streets for Pentecost, as you remember the story, we're looking up here on this upper roots. What the world's wrong with those people up there? Are they drunk? It must have been early in the morning. They can't possibly be drunk this early in the morning. And what happened? Peter stepped out on the balcony. And he began to preach. And he began to tell this huge crowd that the Bible numbers at about 5,000 about Jesus. And then he gets to the place, excuse me, then he gets to the place where he tells them how Jesus was nailed to the cross. And it says that 
we did that to him, what were we, what were we supposed to do? Remember what Peter said? This was the first gospel message ever preached. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive what? The Holy Spirit. That's when the Holy Spirit was poured out. First on the church, the apostles, the disciples, and then whoever received Christ into their life. Because the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit is a pledge. It's like a stamp of approval on us to remind us that we belong to God. It also says, when the Helper comes, in John chapter 15, 26, when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, namely the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify of me. Notice it said, he calls him the Spirit of Truth. One of the ways that we are able to know when we are hearing the truth, or know the truth, or recognize the truth, is because the Holy Spirit within us Amen. reveals that. You've, you've no doubt experienced uh, hearing somebody who was supposed to be a Christian or supposed to be a spirit-filled Christian or supposed to be a man of God who says something all of a sudden in your head says, but wait a minute, I, I, that's not right. Who's that? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals truth to you, and it also He also tells you when you're not receiving truth, you know the difference. Uh, one of the most well-known pastors in the United States, and I'm not going to name names, but his church is in Houston. He was being interviewed by um, I can't think of the guy's name. Where's the suspenders? And uh, pretty, oh, it's an older guy. I forget his name. Anybody remember? Larry P. Oh. Who? Larry P. Yeah, Larry, Larry King. Larry King, thank you. I always thought he was a funny guy. But he's interviewing this pastor on his show. Now, I didn't see the questions at first. I was, I tuned in and was listening when he was getting phone calls because people were, were phoning in to ask this pastor a question, a spiritual question. And this one lady calls in and she says, how do you think people are saved? How do people become Christians? How do you think? And, and he quotes John 14, 6. And, and she says, that's not what you said before. And I mean, she called him on the carpet. Now, I don't know what he said before because I didn't hear it. But Larry King says, that's true. That's not why you said it all ago. And he was called on the carpet because that woman heard that and she knew something was wrong with that. And she called in and confronted him because we have the spirit of truth. And it reveals truth to us so that we know what's right and wrong. Well, We have one last thing, one of the themes. <sighs> one of the most difficult, I think, maybe not for you, but it is for a lot of people, the theme of prayer. We see and hear more about prayer and the example Jesus said than in what he taught. And that's true. You know what that means? He didn't teach. He didn't teach about prayer very much at all. He set an example. You know what I mean? For example, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and told his disciples, sit here while I go over here and pray. He was always going somewhere to pray. You remember when he came under the temptation of Satan? He was, he was in the wilderness 
For 40 days and 40 nights, he was praying and fasting. In Mark chapter 6, verse 46, after bidding them farewell, he left for the mountains to pray. Luke chapter 5, verse 16, but Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. Jesus prayed all the time. Now you would think, okay, wait a minute now. This is God's son, right? He knows what God wants him to do. Uh, he knows why he was sent down here. And yet, he saw the need to always be in touch with the Heavenly Father through prayer. Folks, how can we do less than that? I believe that God would have us be in an attitude of prayer all the time. So that when something happens or comes up or whatever, we can whisper and say, God, did you see that? Or did you hear that? Or did you know that? And, and pray and ask for help or ask for guidance. Because we're, we're to be constantly in touch with God. That God has our ear and we're listening for Him. Amen. We can see clearly that he spent a great deal of time teaching his disciples. Jesus did that. That's the whole point. The three years or so that he walked the earth, he taught and preached. And his disciples went everywhere he went. And he uh, did that in a way of teaching them. So that when he went away, they would be able to do the same thing, which they did.
us and help us spread your word, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done in our lives and everything just being here in church today, Lord, is a miracle for all each and every one of us, Lord. 